Hello, in this special kit bash film, we are going to show you how to construct and modify a many ways line side LK200 wooden station building. We are using the example of platform two at Harmons Cross on the Swanage Railway as a blueprint to show what is possible with a little bit of imagination and using a real building as a basis for our design. So we kick off looking at the station building we would like to use as a blueprint for enhancing our kit. We're not looking to take exact measurements as this is not a scratch build, but we are looking at elements which will enhance an already existing kit and give it its own personality. In this case, it's a wooden structure stood on a waist high stone wall and with a slate tiled roof. We've made notes on the size of the vertical wooden posts in the corners of the building and observed extra wooden features like the finials and position of signage. Having made our notes and taken some measurements and photographs, I can compile a list of items required. We start off with a wooden station building, the LK200 kit, and for the stone wall, Will's material sheets, coarse stone, SSMP200. We will also require liquid polyurethane cement and super glue. We will also need plastic putty and a pack of assorted microstrip. We also have a selection of Humbro enamel paints and for weathering, acrylic washes. Not forgetting the Pico Tools Kit Builders tool set, the PT200. Inside the box you will find your kit and the instructions which you might need for reference for certain elements of this build. Lay out all the kit's components in order to familiarise yourself with its parts. Start off by removing the MDF parts of your kit by gently pushing them through using your fingertips. Then take a Stanley blade and remove all the plastic parts from their mouldings. Take the four walls of your building and a sheet of the wheel's coarse stone and mark out for cutting. You will need to cut three 8mm wide strips off of the wheel's material sheet. Use a pencil to mark out and take great care whilst cutting with a Stanley knife. Then, after cutting, tidy up any rough edges with a file. Then you want to remove 8 millimeters from the bottom of each of the four walls of the station building, which coincides with the third wooden slat recess, as shown here. Again, this can be done with a Stanley blade or a scalpel, but I stress, take care whilst doing this, as mistakes could jeopardize the quality of your build or cause injury. Once both items have been cut, Check they fit together nicely and again cut the correct length for each of the walls. Then make a 6mm wide strip of cardboard from the LK200 box or a piece of plastic microstrip the correct width. This will support the stone wall joint to the wooden parts of your building. We recommend using super glue to attach the strip to the reverse of the bottom of the wooden wall, but make sure you have an overhang to attach to the plastic wall, which you will need to fix a bit later. Repeat this process with all the walls, cutting the strips to match the sections of wall between the doors. Now from the MDF base of your building, remove all of the supporting wall pegs, leaving a flush edge. Now attach the wheel's plastic stone strip to the bottom of the window end wall of the station building using the microstrip or cardboard as a joint strengthener as shown here. Then you can begin cutting the glazing and gluing them in place for all the windows and doors. Attach the windows and doors to the building when the glazing is in place, as this will help form a more solid structure to attach the remaining stone walls to.
Now you want to super glue the two internal walls of your building to the MDF base. Once set, you can then start bringing all the walls of your buildings together. Then, referring to your instructions, make sure you put the roof on the correct way round, using super glue to bond the wood and plastic together. Then attach the roof ridge. Now attach both fascia boards to the gable ends and fit all the window sills. Measure and mark out the positions of the four brackets that will hold the platform canopy onto the station building, making sure they don't obscure the doors and leave room for posters on the walls when super glued in place. Then attach the canopy balancing and super glue the canopy onto the platform side of your station building. Now is also a good time to attach the chimney pot and the guttering to the rear of the building, but leave attaching the downpipes till after you've painted your building. Take the plastic filler and fill the edges on all four corners of your brickwork. It's always best to apply a little bit more than you feel is necessary as you can sand it away and then scribe the patterns of the brickwork into it once it has dried. The bulk of your construction is now finished, but it's all about the fine details which add extra character to your little building. Once the stonework filler has dried and been sanded, then scribed to make the brickwork match, you can then attach the stonewall capping using 1.5mm microstrip. Measure each section, but leave a couple of extra millimetres at the corner wall end. To achieve a 45 degree angle for the corners of the wall capping, I'm using the 45 degree angle marker on the Pico cutting mat and lining it up so I get an accurate cut and I'm cutting through it on top of the ruler. Having measured and cut, cement to the top of the stonework using fine tweezers. You can also use microstrip to form the doorstep underneath the doors and you can use it to recreate the finials. Using 1.3mm microstrip, measure and cut to length for the wooden uprights found on the corners of your station building. Then carefully glue them into place using super glue. You have to be quite quick and precise but be sparing with the amount of super glue you use. And this is what you're looking to achieve. A nice simple building with lots of detail ready for painting and then placing on your layout. But we're not leaving it there. Here is a beautiful Southern Region station reimagined using our imaginations and Harmons Cross station from the Swanage Railway as a basic blueprint for all the enhanced details. Pico produces a massive range of products to help you bring your layout to life. I hope you've enjoyed this kit build film from Pico TV and we look forward to seeing you again on another kit build program in the future.
Thank you.